Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to uh, Fragments of Infinity, what they didn't teach you in music school, and we're into the second level of theory, which I call the major minor key system, and that is the overriding system that we've been taught from a very early age, that there are 12 major keys and 12 minor keys, yada, yada, yada. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is how this all evolved. So, uh, I will have to demonstrate musically, so let me get a guitar in hand. Thanks for your patience. I know that was a long wait in contemporary terms. Okay, good. All right, so, with the advent of temperament, which allowed for all the scales to now interact, all the 12 major keys, if that's what you want to call them. Uh, let, me, let me explain that little parenthetical remark there. Um, when you're dealing with the modes, there is no such thing as a major key or a minor key. It all, because the modes cycle through. You could start on the first step of the scale, and yes, you'll get a major scale if you start on that step. You could start on the second uh, uh, degree of the scale, and now you'll have a minor scale, the Dorian scale. So by way of the fact that any one of the seven notes hypothetically can be roots, it's neither major, it's neither defined as major or minor. It contains both. So what is it? It all depends on the note you start on. So this is uh, one of the big problems with the major minor key system we're about to talk about. Now, so what happened was this. Perhaps because of the complexity that arose now that we're able to interact keys, what they call keys together, and that would be the, the keys you have been taught know about the 12 major keys. Let's not talk about minor keys right now. We'll get there in a second. So if we look on this chart here, so we get all of it in, you'll see that I've got the C scale. And... Uh, in red are the modes that were suddenly, for some mysterious reason, eliminated. The, the ones that are in uh, black are the ones that were kept, and that would be the C Ionian and the A Aeolian in the key of C, uh, relatively the first step and the sixth step of the C scale. Now, the question as to why they got rid of the modes, I have no idea. I mean, I've done research into it. I couldn't find a solid answer on it on the internet. Um, but it, again, it could have been like some sort of practical move because they were dealing with all this, this, this complexity of now having 12 keys that can kind of play around with each other and you can borrow notes from these different keys. Now they're all in tune together. So maybe uh, they, f they felt it was the whole situation was daunting by keeping the uh, Greek modes and they decided to simplify it by making the first step of the scale, calling it a major key and a root. That's an important thing and also the sixth uh, step of the scale as a minor key and a minor root, okay? So now, uh, looking at this, we have two scales left over. Uh, I think you heard about my conspiracy theory of getting rid of the modes too. I mean, like, uh, the Phrygian mode was thought to be erotic, the uh, Mixolydian mode was thought to be partying, so it could quite well be that the um, the church got rid of these modes because they didn't evoke uh, the kind of states that were necessary, necessary for a holy or sacred environment. Um, so that could be the reason. That's my conspiracy theory. I have no idea what the true science and historical reality of it is. But um, now, so, so you can hear it. We have the C Ionian scale, which you're well familiar with, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And don't worry that you don't see the neck of my guitar on my fingering. This isn't about guitar, it's about sound right now. So here we have. Now if I go down to the sixth step, which is an A note, I went downward. If I go up, one, two, three, four, five, six, I also get an A note. If I go down three, I also get an A note. So now I'm gonna start my Aeolian scale. Okay. Now, these are called, respectively, these two scales within the key of C. Uh, the scale based on the first note is called the relative major, and the scale uh, based on the sixth step is called the relative minor. These were new terms. Now, 
since in modern days, like you have to understand that the Greek modes were utterly eliminated back in the early Baroque days. But you know, in modern times, we st we started digging up this ancient stuff and we started using modes again. Therein lies the conflict. You have these two separate systems. Okay, so um, in any case, when you deal with the modes, the pure modes, uh, you can say that all the steps of a key are relative. In a sense, you could say that uh, the important relative relationship is between the one and the six, what we call the relative major, relative minor keys, C, Aeoli, uh, C Ionian, A Aeolian. And I consider that, if you want to think of relative, think of a family, I consider the major uh, step, the first step, to be dad. The minor step at the sixth step is, is the wife, mom. Okay, that's a very special relationship, the husband and wife. The rest of the modes are the kids, all right? So the way, I, in classical terminology, they say relative major and relative minor for these two so-called keys, right? Uh, the term I use is special relative major and special relative minor because indeed they have a special relationship. However, when you go to the Greek modes, the D Dorian scale is related to the C scale. You can't deny that. So uh, basically, I'm going to be using in the future the terms relative and parallel, two very, very important concepts in unlocking and understanding what this is all about. Relative simply means within the key you're in, and parallel means uh, a different key comparatively, like C compared to E flat. E flat is parallel to C in the sense that in C I get Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Di, Do, and E flat I get Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Di, Do. They're parallel to each other. They do the same thing, but at different um, frequencies, okay? So, um, but, like I said, in the Greek modes, uh, that system, uh, all the notes are related within a key, all right? When we move to the major minor key system, I have to use a new term called special relative and special, uh, also special parallel, actually. We'll get to that later. But... Um, Special relative simply means the relationship between the one and the six. Now, in a way, you could say that historically, the Greek modes were major-based, in a sense. And the only reason I say that is because when you have a major key, take the key of C, at the fifth step, you build the, C, the G7 chord, and it will resolve to C major. That's an important uh, resolution. So in a sense, you could say the Greek modes are major-based. When you move to the major minor key system, you could say uh, the whole system was really minor based, and you'll see why in a minute. That what they set about to do was tweak this Aeolian scale, because it was a little boring to the composers now. They only had two scales instead of seven to choose from, so they wanted something you know that had a little more uh, meat on the bones, a little more color, a little more excitement, and uh, we're going to discuss that in a moment. Okay, so. This is a section of my book called The Evolution of the Minor uh, uh, Keys, or Minor Scales, I like to call them. And by the way, the classical terminology for these tweak scales that come out of the Aeolian mode, they're called harmonic and melodic minor, they call these modes, the harmonic minor mode and the melodic minor mode. I call them modalities. I want to make a, a distinction between the Greek modes and these modalities they are modalities of the Aeolian mode, all right? They are the tweakery around the Aeolian mode. Now, why the tweaking? That's the question. Um, what happened basically was this. One of the notes initially of the Aeolian uh, scale got changed. Now, the question is, why did they choose this particular note? And when I analyzed it, I could only say, I could come up with two reasons. One was an actual uh, uh, based on scale steps, in other words, a melodic reason for creating this scale, or it could also be based on harmony, a harmonic reason for creating this scale. So let's look at both. The interesting thing is when you analyze it from the harmonic perspective or the scalar perspective, you come up with the same exact result, which is the harmonic minor scale, which I'm about to show you. So now you might want to see the neck here because when I do this Aeolian scale, we're going to concern ourselves with the seventh uh, and first, uh, seventh and eighth, or seventh and first steps, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay. 
Now if we compare that to the uh, C major scale, there's one distinct difference between the six and seven steps. If you notice with the C major scale, there's a really strong pull to come back to C. Whereas the, Aeolian, the Aeolian scale, it's not as committed. It's a little wishy-washy, yeah, it wants to go there, but it could just as easily go back. All right, so the composers thought, well, what makes this pull to the very final root note happen? And they analyzed it and saw that, well, in the major scale, you have a, a half step between the seventh step and the first step of the scale. So if we look at the Aeolian, they decided to take this G note, raise it up, thus giving me a, a half step. Now listen to the sound of it when it resolves. Really wants to go there. So that's one analysis. The, the Aeolian mode, uh, they tweaked uh, the G sharp to get a half step between G sharp and A, and that um, created the mode. Now, you have to think about, well, what are the chords now that are coming out of this mode? Like when we take the chord family template of the key of C, um, if, all right, we get at the fifth step a, a G note, right? And the chord there would be G7. But if I raise that note to G sharp, as I've done with the Aeolian scale, suddenly these chords are gonna change up. First of all, there's no more G. There's a G sharp, so you can have a G7. So let's talk about the harmony now. If we go up the uh, chord family template of the key of C, five steps. We get the G7, the all important dominant seventh, five steps away from where it wants to go home, the C chord. So approaching this now, not melodically, but harmonically, the composers might have said, well, what is the fifth step? If I do the chord scale of, of the Aeolian, what is the fifth step? Oh, sorry. Um. That's E minor to A minor. Notice it's, again, a non-committal resolution. It could resolve there, but it could kind of move around. You can hear the root, definitely. A minor is the root. But they said, well, gee, you know, with the C scale, when I go up five steps, I get a, an all-important dominant seventh chord resolving to my one. What if I go five steps up the Aeolian scale, and on that chord, which is E minor, what if I turn it into E7? Okay, so... Now, the only difference being one note that creates that E7. Because when you think about it, E minor seven is E, G, B, D, right? And now we have E, G sharp, B, D. Well, those are the notes of an E7 chord. Now, the interesting thing is, if we don't come from the perspective of the scale, but just make that harmony, E7 going to A minor, the scale that's extracted from those two chords is indeed the same scale as the harmonic minor scale. So you see, it could have evolved from the scale step, trying to make that little half step, or it could have evolved from, well, let's make a dominant seventh chord at the fifth step. Okay, so now we see how uh, this scale could have developed either by way of the harmony or by way of tweaking that half step melodically at the top of the scale. However, um, one thing that's new about this scale that didn't exist before, perhaps in European harmony, was uh, generally, the way nature gave us the scale, it, it's comprised of solely whole steps and half steps and nothing larger or, well, there is nothing smaller. So, uh, but when we tweak the scale for the G sharp, we get a step and a half interval, a minor third interval, first time appearing, perhaps, in European music. So now, Although the, uh, the church authorities must have loved this resolution, at the same time, this interval sounded a little Middle Eastern to their ears, and especially in those days, the, uh, those infidels, those Islamic infidels, you know, uh, the church didn't like that 
they felt maybe perhaps it was a bad influence on the music. So perhaps they went to the composers and said, look, we like that resolution, but we don't like that interval. Is there any way you could fix it? So if you look up the scale, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So if you did raise the six step by a half uh, step, thus making the F and F sharp, and now we have the scale, rather than A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A. Okay, and what that does to the scale sound is this. Alright, that's known as the melodic minor scale. And maybe rightly so, maybe the original scale was developed harmonically and then it was tweaked melodically later on and therefore we have the melodic minor scale. So the difference being uh, on paper, or in this case on whiteboard, we have the C major scale over here. Here we have the evolution of the minor scales. Here's the Aeolian scale purely, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Then we have the harmonic minor, A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. Then we have the, the fixed scale. In other words, it was fixed to make it uh, more palatable for the motorcyclist outside my window. All right. So then we have A. Then we have A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A thus giving us that final sound. That, ladies and gentlemen, probably mostly gentlemen or all gentlemen, is the evolution of the minor scales right there. Now, that isn't the end of it, that's the beginning of it. Uh, a lot, a lot of change occurs. Think about it, you know, you had the chord family template from the key of C. Well, now we have a tweaked note inside there. The chords are gonna change. Any chord that had a G note in it is gonna change. All right, not just that, but when we turn it into the second evolution, which is the melodic minor scale, then we have an F sharp and a G sharp inside of that scale, and that changes a lot in terms of the harmonies. So what is to come is some serious complexity. And what I'm going to teach you and show you is that actually all three of these scales have to be melded together in modern music for anything to work well. And you're going to see that um, as I explain further. But that's it in a nutshell. That's the evolution of the major, uh, of the minor scales within, uh, within the key of C at least we looked at. So uh, we moved from Aeolian, natural minor, uh, now known as relative minor, to harmonic minor, a modality of that Aeolian scale, and then down to the melodic minor, another modality of that Aeolian scale. Uh, this tweakery is a wonderful thing because it created all sorts of new possibilities and minor keys are just awesome to play through. Um, they just have a, a colorful quality that's really nice. And in fact, if you talk to any jazz musician and ask them, do you prefer to improvise in a major key or a minor key? I guarantee you 95% of the time the jazz musician will say, I love the minor keys because they give you so much to work with and you're going to see how and why that is in the future. Okay, guys. Uh, sorry it's been a while. Uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I'm back in the studio. I'm really excited. I'm working on a little kind of uh, throw together CD of some of my more recent material that uh, the CD I have right now isn't representative of the stuff I'm doing now. So I want it's something that will represent me now. So I'm very excited about that. We'll see what happens with it. It's going to take some time, but uh, you know. Anyway, signing off. Have a good one. Love you guys and take care.